that thing going? It is. Okay, this is Red from Better Tattooing. Today let's uh, talk about tattooing in the ditch. <laughs> this is elbow and knee. All right. Now that that's over with, uh, tattoo in the ditch. I know a lot of people have actually asked me this in the past couple months. Like, how can you do the ditch and not have it just turn into this bloody mess? And uh, you can't. Uh, <laughs> you can. I mean, it's just knowing how to, to set this up and work with it, right? So, for the most part, if we have, and we'll do our little arm thing here, boop, soft spot in the center of the arm, boop, 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 boop. This goes into armpit. This can go for any of those uh, highly flexible, mobile, uh, softer, more elastic, and more prone to sweating when closed and kept together areas of the body. Um, tattooing them can be really, really difficult because your natural inclination with this is if you don't do it right, you've got to bury the needle like a son of a gun. And when you do that, the body reacts like you would expect and it just starts crying blood. So. Uh, tips for tattooing this stuff. One is positioning is going to be big, right? Position is uh, number one, right? When you have somebody out with their arm like this, changing the positioning of where their arm is actually rolled and connected on this can influence how you're able to stretch the actual skin, right? So having someone's arm just straight out versus turning and twisting when you get into color, that can actually change how your needles are going to impart the uh, pigment into the skin. So when you think about the positioning, right, you're going to try rolling. Especially if the person is really, really, really thin, they don't have a lot of muscle. Sometimes that can help uh, stabilize one part of the skin versus the other part, maybe the outer, the inner, inner, outer. And the reason why this is important, right, is because this area is really elastic. So what happens is like, one, you can't really get a good stretch in this area. Um, because there's nothing backing it, right? It's like tattooing a tummy. You've got to really give it hell to get that skin stretched so that you can get the needles to go in without just bouncing off of it. Normally, when we do something, we'll have maybe a slight sine wave or acoustic uh, uh, effect on the skin when the needles are hitting it because we're able to control how much that skin moves by giving it a stretch. When you reach these other spots like this, and the needle comes in, you're gonna have large waveforms actually coming off this and the skin is going to be moving away from the needle at a much faster rate. So that's why well, most people will just hang the needle a little bit more and just bury that sucker, right? And when you're doing that, what you're doing is you're using your tube tip to actually physically depress the skin to a point where it's stretched and then that needle is going way in there, which is not good. Um, if you try rolling the position a bit, it can actually help the, uh, the needles enter the skin a little bit better. Uh, so number two is going to be glide. On average, once you start tattooing this space, it's going to start sweating, exudate, whatever, right? And it'll get really mealy really, really quick. So when you have your glide that's going on this, you're going to have to be really, 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 really light with it. You don't want to be liberal. There's only a little bit of the time and maybe even every two or three times that you're going to be doing a pass, may you add a little bit more. Um, Otherwise, it's just going to get way oversaturated. The skin will over plump and then it's not going to want to take your pigment, right? Number three, we can use compression. And this is a great trick actually anywhere on the body. If you start getting to that point where you maybe have a little bit too much glide, you haven't really tried to reposition them and you've been burying the hell out of that needle, um, the skin will start sweating out, right? So what you do is just literally grab a dry paper towel or you can wet it if you want to, whatever. Be the judge of how the client's skin is when you get into it. Take it and then just hold it on there just for you know four or five seconds and pull it off. When you do that, you're gonna be forcing the body to remove a little bit of that inflammation by literally pressing it out and as well uh, stopping like you do with a wound, <laughs> any of that bleeding by adding direct pressure to it, right? That will help it a little bit for you to get into. Now, you can't do that too many times because over a period of like a half hour to an hour of just constantly doing compressions and you keep going at it, all you're gonna be doing is just chewing up the skin, right? So this is like, if you have a couple little things left to do in the ditches, knee, elbow, armpit, whatever, uh, this would be a way to like get those extra five, 10 minutes out of it without totally destroying the body, right? But if you keep doing it, you're just gonna chew it up. 
So last thing is uh, take multiple passes. This is one of the best ways to make sure that it's gonna heal out and go well, right? Because if you overwork this and somebody, let's say, lives, they're gonna be using their arms. This is how they interact with their environment. If you overwork it, they're gonna bend and move more and more and more. They're gonna side sleep, they're gonna do something. They're gonna wake up, they're gonna rip that skin into pieces. It is going to take forever for this to heal out. If it heals out well, which is gonna go down just like right down the tube, if you've beaten the hell out of that, it's probably not gonna happen. But it's, it's, it's just gonna extend the amount of time it's gonna to take to get that perfect, because you're gonna to have to wait for an even longer heal, you're gonna to have to do scar abatement, then you're gonna to have to try to re-put that stuff in, and then you're gonna to have to try over and over and over. If you can't just keep beating it up, you're gonna end up with a scarred mess where you can't put any detail in, right? I mean, even past that, you probably shouldn't do detail. And why is that, Ryan? <clears throat> uh, we have a video about uh, skin stretching and chrysalines, right? Uh, skin tension lines. Uh, what you can see is this parts of the body that are hypermobile, which we will put that video link there. Um, they tend to age faster, right? They tend to become more saggy over time. And when that happens, any of the pigment that you put in there, especially if it's in large concentrations, it will end up becoming occluded. And when it becomes occluded, it's just not gonna have any detail, it'll just turn into mush. So if you put like a portrait there, it's gonna look like when it's, you know, 30 years out. So there you go, tips for tattoo in the ditch. Um, I imagine that everyone is just gonna position this however they want. So I mean like positioning, just past the rolling stuff, whatever. But you know, armrest, you know, whatever. <laughs> Back of the legs, table, armpit, hug yourself. Uh, or I guess that would be the flex. Anyways, uh, pretty simple. Just really, really, really think about, especially if you're doing a large scale piece, you're gonna be working on a sleeve. Take multiple passes and plan ahead, right? Go into your mid-tones, come back to your darks and lights, uh, or whatever, and just, just slowly build that area. Because if you do, all of these things is gonna take less time to heal and your client is gonna love you. That's it. This is Ryan from Better Tattoo and signing off.